Okay, chapter two. There's a lot of information in this chapter, um, and it's not difficult if you take it step by step. So uh, let's get started. And remember, um, we are going to rename the file. I've opened up the file it told us to, PLR sales expenses. So I'm immediately going to save it to my desktop as chapter two with my name. All right, so let's get started. Now, I'm not going to do it exactly how the book does it. You can read along in the book, and that's fine. That's one way to do it, and I'll do it another way so that you'll see both ways. The first thing it wants us to do is add up these total sales. So there's you know a, a many different ways to do it, but I'm just going to do it the simple way and say equal and then click on that cell, hit the plus sign, and click on that cell. And then I can hit the enter key or the tab key, or I can hit the check mark. And I'm going to copy this over. And it copies correctly because this first cell um, is formatted the same as, as um, the rest of it. But this might not, we might not be able to use the fill handle in all circumstances. And we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, so here's our total sales. Now, how much of this total sales did we actually have to spend to make these sales? So here's our categories. We have a mortgage, administrative commission, and support. And you can see over here the percentage of our total sales that each thing is. So our mortgage is 17% of the sales, administration 15, et cetera, et cetera. So what we want to do is we want to take the mortgage and we want to multiply it, the total sales, by this 17% to see what is 17% of 25,510. So I'm going to say equal, and I'm going to say uh, B17, I'll do it similar to what the book did, or K4, uh, times B7. Now, I can't leave it like this, because if I do, let me just show you, when I click and drag this over, there's nothing here, because when I use my fill handle, it copies the formula over from K4 to L4. Well, there's nothing in L4, so I can't do that. So the, the thing I want to do is I want to make K4 an absolute value. And I do that by hitting the F4 key on my keyboard. That's the um, F4 function key. And it um, toggles between absolute, uh, this is a mixed reference, a mixed reference, um, relative reference, absolute, mixed, mixed, relative, absolute. So I just hit F4 and it always gives me that absolute first. So 17% of 25,000 is 4,000 something. So I want to do the same for administrative. So this is equal to administrative, and I'm going to hit the F4 key, times total sales. And I'm going to do the same thing here. This is equal to commission absolute times total sales. And lastly, support equals support F4 times this. And the whole time I'm using my keyboard, even though I have my mouse, I'm, I'm moving my mouse, I'm actually using the keyboard to do all of this. So I get my total, uh, my expenses for my total sales. For the total expenses, it wants us to um, do equal this plus this, plus this, I'm just going to use my sum function and sum it up. And now that I have the answer to all of these, I can use my fill handle and copy them down. Now I could copy all the way over to here, but in fact I don't want to because there's nothing in this area. So I'm just going to copy to September. We're going to do these totals in a minute. All right, 
So we have all of our expenses. We've made 25,000 and it cost us 13,000 to create that much in sales. So it tells you to use your um, trace, trace precedence or uh, on our formulas. Uh, we can look at where these numbers came from. Um, we can remove the arrows, show formulas, etc. So uh, I'm not going to do everything that the book does, but I, I would recommend that you do and just practice with these things. All right, so now let's get these totals. I'm going to add these two up, sum them, and I can copy that formula all the way down, but I kind of have a problem with that because watch what happens. Oops, I only want to go that far. It's going to continue to copy that formatting, right? Because this had the um, a double underline, green double underline, it did that for all of them. So when I uh, do this, I want to fill without formatting. So the book says select cell H6 which is this plus this plus this plus this, and copy it all the way down through H16. And we haven't done, or I haven't shown you the net income, but I will. And I want to fill without formatting. So it keeps all the original formatting. All right, so I don't have, I forget here. So that formula, it shows us on on page 92. This formula is uh, B5. Plus B6. Um, I need a parentheses around this. B5 plus B6. Um, close parenthesis minus here's our total expenses and also minus and now this is where we're going to make a 3d reference and a 3d reference means we go from one sheet to another sheet so we're going to go to Cass Lake B5 so that's our taxes and it says up there it tells us the sheet we went to and B5 and then when we hit the enter key, it pops back to the cell. So let me see if my numbers are right. 816320, that's right. And you can see that I have an answer down here too. So I'm going to continue to fill this in and then that number will change. And we need to get rid of these little zeros. And there we go. So this is the uh, first part of the pause and practice. So let's save it. Make sure we've given it the right name. Save it and we're going to use the same one and start off from here for pause and practice too. Okay, so let's turn to page 98. 97 is where it starts and it says to open up the pause and practice one which I renamed chapter two with my name as you should too. You don't have to name it what the book tells you to. That's fine if you do, but your name has to be on it so I understand it. Whose um, file I'm looking at. All right, so we're going to enter some totals in here and some averages for these sets of numbers, our two quarters. So we want to have um, the sum of all of these. Well, the sum of all of these, and it, it wants you to practice with this thing right here. So if I say sum and add all of these up, did I get it? Here we go. Let me do it this way and choose sum. All right, so it's not doing it for me. Sum. And it will always look up first, and if it doesn't find a number above, it will look to the left. In this case, it found a number, one, but we don't want that. So I click and drag this. 
So here's my formula, sum of B7 through G7. And that number should be exactly the same as this. And sure enough, it is. So I could actually just tell it, instead of the sum of those, I could just say that the total sales equals H7. Okay. So either one, it's the same. All right. So one way is the sum function. Let me go back. Here's the sum function. Here's H7. Sum function, H7. They're exactly the same number. Same thing. All right, so you decide which one you want. There might be reason to use these because, well, I don't really, no, I don't really see a, a difference where I would need to use one or the other because it's the same number. But anyway, all right, so let's go average, equal average, or we could go here to equal average, which it wants you to do, or we can see it right here, equal average, okay? Open parenthesis, click and drag, and enter. And I'll do this one here. This is the max, equal max. Now again, it found numbers, but those aren't the numbers we want. So we could type, or uh, for me, it's just easier to click and drag. Maximum, minimum, I could be typing, but it's almost easier just to click here. And count the months. So that is count nums, count numbers count cells that have a number in it and not text. So we want again, count nums for there. And there's six months we're counting. The book has you um, do a copy and paste of the max function to um, change it to a min function. And you make these um, numbers absolute. And then when you drag down you have the same formula, but you can change it to min, and then you get your minimum. So again, there's many ways to do things in Excel. Find the one that's easiest for you. For me, it's just easiest to either type it in or just find it up here and click and drag the numbers. But it's good to know how to do it a different way too. So go ahead and try it how the book does it. And that's pause and practice too. So really, this is the, the easy part. The more difficult formulas we're going to do, um, we're going to look at uh, a VLOOKUP on this one, we're going to look up a PMT on this one, okay, and we're going to do some little formulas in here. So get ready for pause and practice three, and I'm going to save this file. I don't need to give it a different name because it all ends up being one in the end. And I want to be on page 109 now. All right, the first formula we're going to do here is a sum if. Uh, you know what, I want my total, my word total to show up there better. So I'm just gonna make that a little wee bit bigger. All right, there we go. So I want the function sum if. Now I've used all of these functions, but if you haven't used it, you can just type it in there and it will find it. Make sure it's sum if, not sum ifs. We want sum if. And we're going to add up all of the mortgages. So I need to be an E20, and I am, and my range is asking me for um, A10, these, A10 through A13. So it's giving me the words that are in there, and you can see quotes around each one because those are text, not numbers. Our criteria is mortgage, and we need to put mortgage in um, quotes because it's words. And if it finds the word mortgage, what do we want it to sum up? And we want it to sum up uh, B8. What? Wait, maybe I did this wrong. Let's take a look. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I did it right. I'm just looking at the wrong thing. I want it to um, sum up H10. Yes, that's it. I want it to sum up H10 through H13. So give me the number 
look at these, find the word it matches, and give me the answer from these set of numbers. And sure enough, the answer is 71, 742, 38. Okay? Seems kind of silly. Why didn't we just say, you know, this is equal to that? But remember, in the book we get uh, simplified examples of what right, might really happen in a complex way in a real life situation. So we're getting a little bit of hand holding here. All right, so let's look at G20 here. We're going to do the sum product. And remember, product means multiply, so it's going to do some uh, multiplication behind the scenes. So I want up here, I want sum product. I've already used it, but I'll pretend like I haven't. And there it is. So my first array is B16. Through uh, H16. Okay, and what is it going to multiply? Well, it's going to multiply times one of these numbers because this is our additional income that we're earning from cabins rented. So our second array is B18. Let me see. B16, and our second array is B18. Oh, yes, there we go. Through H18. And I'm verifying that this is what my array is. And I'm going, and I'm getting an answer. Okay, I'm going to say okay. And here's the additional income. So it took some number, I don't know what, and multiplied, I must, well, I'm not quite sure. That's an interesting dilemma. It took our income and it said, okay, let's multiply this. So on income was 25,000 this month, August, but it multiplied that, increased that. So, um, even though it said our total income was 135, it was actually our total income is 143 because of the extra cabins we rented. It looks like in May and August. All right, we're almost done. The next thing we're going to do is just round the net income, which seems kind of silly to me, but we're gonna round it to um, one value. So I'm going to say equal round, whoops, not found, maybe I better use my function box, round, I think I will use the function box, it's better, uh, easier to, round, round, I have too many rounds now, okay. So what's our number? This is our number, and what are we going to round it? It says to one, and you can see 0.5. But because we have this um, as an accounting style, we'll get five zero. So it just rounds this number. Um, it pulls it up to uh, a half, you know, 50 cents instead of 48 cents. All right, now let's get into some interesting formulas. So our investment options, we need to change to this worksheet. We want to know whether we should um, uh, purchase some cabins and the cabins cost this much. We're going to uh, pay them off in 30 years at 5% interest. Now, you know you don't pay yearly, you pay monthly. So even though we pay for 30 years, our payment is monthly, so it would be 30 times 12 months. So that's how many payments? 3 times 12, three, 360. And our interest rate is 5%. We pay that annually, but we don't pay 5% each month. We have to divide this 5% by 12 so that we know what's the small little portion of 5% we pay each month. So let's go into our function box. I really do prefer to do payment functions in the function box 
it's just easier to have these little um, uh, areas to figure it out. So here's our PMT, and the percent sign is already on there. That's a really important fact. You can't have five. It has to be five percent, and that needs to be divided by 12. And you know, this is the biggest mistake students make. They forget to divide by 12. You don't want to pay 5% every month. You want to pay 5% a year. So you can see that each month we pay only 0.00416% of that 5. Here's our NPR. Now it's telling us the total number of payments. And that's, we're paying it for 30 years, but we don't pay once a year, we pay every month. So there we are, 360 months. And then our PV is the present value, the total amount that the future payments is worth now. So basically, what are you borrowing? And we're borrowing 450000 So here's the answer right there. And that's what the book shows you, uh, $2,400. We don't need the FV in the type. The FV is if you had a balloon payment that was going to be due. And the type is whether it's at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month that you make your payment. This is important for banks because, you know, the, the couple of cents that you would pay over a 30-year period, a couple of cents a month, might end up actually being hundreds of dollars at the end of 30 years. So they like to put in whether it's at the beginning of the month or the end of the month. But we don't need these. They're not bolded, so they're not required within the function. We only need these three. So, for example, Microsoft gives you 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments. I wish they would do by 12 for monthly payments. That just makes more sense to me. But um, it's a geared towards business, and businesses usually pay quarterly. All right, so let's see. So here we are, and it's a negative number, so it's showing in red. If I want it to show as a positive value, I can say negative PMT, and it shows as a positive value. Or I can say negative B4. I could have done negative B4 within the function itself. I could say negative B4 in there. And it will show as a positive value. But the book doesn't have us do that. It doesn't matter to me which one you want to do. That's fine. So now we're going to decide whether um, we should purchase new property. And that's an if function. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, if this number, well, let's just get our function box up here. And let's do if. I've already got it up here. Okay. So here's our logical test. What is our argument? What happens if it's true? What happens if it's false? So our argument is, if this payment is less than something on this location one uh, uh, worksheet here, if it's less than that, then we're going to go ahead and buy the property. So our logical test, as the book shows us, is if B7 is less than, oh, and it has negative B7, so that we end up with a, um, a positive value. Negative B7 is less than, and we're going to Cass Lake B23, which is B23, minimum monthly sales. Okay. And we are already getting an answer. Okay. So what happens if that's true? Um, then we want to say yes. And we have to put yes within quotes because remember it's not a number, it's letters. And what happens if it's false? So what do we want to show here? If it's true or if it's false? So let's look at this. So if negative B7 is less than, then that's the worksheet. Um, exclamation point B3, then yes or no. So look what happens if I write yes and no. It automatically did that for me because it understands its text. Oh, I'm just going to capitalize these. 
So for yes and no, it can kind of figure it out. But if you wanted something like by now, let's see if it'll do that. Oh yeah, it put it within quotes. No, we'll just leave it as no. Okay. So it's going to say by now because that's what I told it to say. Okay. Uh, the book has you do yes. I, it doesn't matter to me. I just want to see some positive value in there. Uh, write whatever you want in between your quotes. That's fine with me. Okay. All right. So last thing is our production costs. So we've used PMT, we've used if, we've used on this one, min, max, sum, average, okay? Um, some product, round, some if, so there's all these different formulas we've used in here. And that's pretty easy when the book is holding our hands, but sometimes they get confusing when you get to the end of the chapter stuff and you're doing it on your own. So, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. All right, so our last one is using a VLOOKUP. So here's our VLOOKUP product cost. And what we're doing is we're going to look up these few items and we want to look it up in here. And if it finds that number, what do we want it to say over here? Do we want it to tell us the name or the cost? That's what we're looking at. Now this is a VLOOKUP because we're looking vertically. If product ID, name, and cost were in this direction and each product was over here, one, 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 two, three, two, 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 three, four, blah, 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 then that would be an H lookup or a horizontal. For you, we're using a vertical lookup. All right, so we're gonna go in here, and I already know we want it to show the cost because it says cost there. And again, remember, this is a really simple example, but a V lookup or an H lookup is really handy when you have huge amounts of data and you're sorting through it. Okay, so I want my V lookup or H lookup and I'm going to do it the way the book does it for you. So it's probably there, VLOOKUP. So we have three things we need. So what's our lookup value? And that's this. What are we comparing to this table array? So we're comparing this number to this array of information. Now, we have to make sure that this array of information is absolute value because when we click and drag down, it will start looking, it'll start going down. E4 will become E5 and G8 will become uh, H9 and stuff like that. So we don't want it. We absolutely want it to only look at these numbers. And what do we want to show? So this is column one, this is column two, and this is column three. If I said column one, it will actually show me the number. 2234. So I'd have 2234 and 2234 there. Um, and there's the answer. If I put column 2, it would actually tell me that 2234 is fishing rod. But I want the cost. So that's column 3. And there's the, the price of it. 2550. So I'm going to say OK. And now, it, let's take a look at this before I copy it down. So here, I, and this has to do with formatting. Well, I'm just gonna copy it down without formatting. That's the easiest way to do it. If I do this, I won't get my, uh, my border will be gone because there was no border on this when I copied it down. So it does exactly the same formatting, which is um, just a number with no border, but I want to fill without formatting. So then all of my borders stay, and then it wants us to have a uh, currency sign there. Okay, so there you go. We're all done. That's chapter two. Watch this video over and over if you want. Slow it down, stop, re-listen, and ask me lots of questions. There's a lot of information that's really important in this chapter. All right. Have fun with it.